Major funding for Election 2020 ballot initiatives provided by AARP Arkansas. Hello again, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us. We do this every two years because the University of Arkansas's Public Policy Center does it every two years. A division of the Cooperative Extension Service, the center dissects the issues that voters will decide at the November general election. Amendments to the state constitution proposed by the legislature or other organizations. Initiated acts proposed by citizen groups. There are three such issues on this year's ballot, all the work of the legislature. There were others, but the Arkansas Supreme Court made moot those questions, and we'll have more on that in a moment. Over the years, the Policy Center has won widespread acclaim for its objective, nonpartisan analysis of ballot questions, and our viewers have let us know they value these programs most highly. So, joining us again this year, Dr. Stacy McCullough, the Policy, Policy Center's director, and Kristen Higgins, its program associate. Thanks to you both again. Thanks it's nice for to see you me. after a couple yeah, of years. Good anyway. to be here. Thank Seems you. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> Dr. McCullough, let's start with issue one, which has to do with highway, and it's attracted an awful lot of attention. Absolutely. Um, issue one is a proposal. It is a proposed constitutional amendment, as you said, from the legislature. Um, and it would basically make permanent a half a percent sales tax uh, to support to support funding for the state's highway systems, for county roads, for city streets. Um, so currently there is a half percent sales tax on the books. It was approved by voters back in 2012 as a part of Amendment 91. And it is set to expire in June of 2023. And so this proposal would extend that beyond that date um, indefinitely unless uh, another constitutional amendment in the future came forward to, right. to, to make it go away. So in a sense, it is permanent until, until it would be repealed if it were to be repealed. Um, the funds for this, it is a special revenue fund, so it would have to go towards maintaining, repairing, or making improvements to state highways, to county roads, to city streets, bridges, other transportation, um, uh, surface transportation needs that, that would be across the state. Dedicated stream. Yeah, it has to be used for that purpose. Um, the way it's going to be split is very similar. It's the exact same formula that the current tax is split. So 70% of the revenues uh, would go to funding the state highway system. 15% uh, would go to counties to support their roads and 15% would go to cities. So right now, based on estimates that the Department of Finance and Administration has released, um, just under $206 million would be for the state network, $44 million spread across counties, $44 million spread across cities. And those would be the annual estimates. Right. There is, of course, both sides. Yes. Yep. So um, with our voter guides, what we always try to do is try to take the information that's in the proposal, explain it in terms that uh, most people can understand, myself included, um, give a little bit of context to that, but also show what both supporters and opponents are saying. So in this case, uh, the supporters are saying that um, th these are needed. Uh, it will create jobs. It will uh, stimulate economic activity in our state. They're saying that um, it's not really a new tax. It's just extending something that's already there. They're saying that it's really important for public safety and having reliable roads for our citizens. Um, and that uh, we need to be looking at alternative sources of funding because the historical funding that we've relied on um, has been decreased as we've had increases in fuel efficiency. So taxes associated uh, with gas consumption or diesel consumption have gone down. Construction costs are increasing. And so this is an, an an alternative way of funding these uh, needed infrastructure improvements. Opponents, on the other hand, uh, they also are saying, well, quite honestly, we have too many roads in our state that are trying to be maintained, and that uh, any dollars that you that you funnel to the state to support roads, they're going to spend every penny of it, and it's never going to be enough. Um, 
Some of them are concerned that uh, a portion of the money is going to support the 30 crossing uh, project in Little Rock. Uh, that's the replacement of the I-30 bridge. Um, that's been a very controversial um, project, and so uh, there's some concerns about that. Um, they also say that, you know, this isn't it's violating the promises that some lawmakers have made to citizens because it is a new tax. We have a current tax, but it's set to expire. This would be uh, replacing that tax with a new one. Um, and finally, I think the other argument that opponents are really trying to say is that the state needs to look more broadly at how to um, address transportation needs. Right now, the, they feel like RDOT is ignoring public transportation and other options that some citizens Arkansas might need. Department of Transportation, RDOT. Yeah. Correct, yes, thanks. No, go ahead. No, nope. so those are sort of what supporters and opponents are saying. Um, uh, the Department of Transportation has estimated that uh, counties and cities could stand to lose about 30% of the revenue that they use for their roads um, if the tax basically expires in 2023 as it is, as it is, as it is expected to do. Um, right now the counties and the cities rely some from money from the state in form of turn back funds and then also local taxes, fees, et cetera, to support their roads. State is split differently. They get about 43% of their current funding from federal sources uh, with the remaining coming from state sources. So, um, you know, these are complex issues. Everybody wants to have good roads to drive in. The question is, what's the right way to pay for it? And um, basically, that's what voters are being asked to decide. You mentioned uh, that uh, some of the, uh, our opponents anyway, uh, or excuse me, advocates of surface transportation, or of certainly of them, we need to look for alternative sources of farming. Traditionally, Arkansas, until very few Arkansas years ago, short years ago, Arkansas relied almost entire, well, other than federal funds, it relied in terms of state dollars on motor fuels taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, and only in recent years have we gone into general, re what are called general revenues mm -hmm. uh, for additional highway funding. And that's been a, a matter of contention for mostly beneficiaries of the general fund. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, one of the reasons legislators are looking at this as an option because it creates a dedicated stream of funding to support roads instead of trying to figure it out at the state level. They're, they're basically saying, let's let the voters decide if this is an important issue, whether they want to fund it in this way or whether they want the state lawmakers to come up with alternative ways of funding roads. Do, does the center have a sense of exactly how much in terms of the opposition, how it breaks down. Any way to quantify, you know, like 30 crossing opposition, the tax extension, new tax versus old tax? No, I, you know, uh, what, what we have in our, in our voter guide are statements that have been made publicly for the most part. Um, to my knowledge, there haven't, hasn't been a lot of polling that really breaks down the differences between I oppose it for this reason versus this reason, or for that matter, how supporters are breaking out either. So, no, we don't don't have a breakout on that, unfortunately. Let's go on to issue two with uh, Kristen Higgins. These all get a lot of attention. Right, so issue two is a proposed constitutional amendment that uh, would affect uh, Arkansas's existing term limits. Um, if you remember, uh, Arkansas voters in 2014 approved a constitutional amendment that included um, changing the state's uh, term limits for how long legislators can serve in the state uh, Senate or in the House of Representatives. Right now, our legislators can serve 16 years total over their lifetime, and they can serve it in the House, they could serve it in the Senate, however they want for those 16 years. But once they reach 16 years, they can no longer come back for re-election. That's the cap. That's the cap, that's the existing cap. So issue two would change that. Issue two would uh, allow legislators to still serve in the House or Senate, whichever way they want, but up to 12 years. And then once they hit 12 years, if they um, want to run for office again, they have to wait about four years before they can serve again. So uh, right now we have uh, term limits that are called lifetime term limits. And issue two would end lifetime limits and allow people to run for reelection however many times that they want, as long as they sit out a three, four year period. 
I say three because uh, they would run for re-election before four years. Uh, they just couldn't take office until four years had passed. Uh, so uh, th that's, a, that's a big difference because, uh, you know, as I mentioned, we, we've got lifetime limits and then now it would be going to um, as often as they can be reelected as long as they take that break. Uh, and in the 12 year period that they would be allowed to serve now if reelected, uh, they would count two year apportionments or two year terms that the Senate serves after a census. So that would apply to got the 12 years. Up. Right, yeah, we have one coming up. Um, right now that two year term does not count toward their 16 years. So that's a, a change as well. Uh, so that's um, pretty much what it would do. Um, you know, if I'm sure voters remember term limits have been around uh, a, a while. Uh, voters first approved term limits in Arkansas in 1992 and it's been on the ballot several times or it's uh, been attempted to be put on the ballot several times. Uh, so this this is a, a yet another attempt to, to change the, the term limits for our state legislators. Could we encapsulate it this way? Uh, under the amendment, if approved, it would be 12, possibly 14 in the case of some senator. 12, 4, 12, 4, 12, 4. That, that could be how it goes, yes, yeah. Uh, because uh, they, ha they would be required to take that break. Right. Uh, legislators who are currently serving or people who are elected this November to serve in the legislature, uh, they would be grandfathered under the existing 16 years. But once they reach that 16 year cap, they would then fall under the new rules that would allow them um, to do the 12 years. So conceivably 16, four out and another. Another Plus, 12, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, the, argue, the advocates, what do they say? So supporters of this, uh, as you mentioned, this is one that came from the legislature. Uh, supporters of this say that this uh, setup recognizes uh, Arkansans' desire to have some term limits. Uh, it, so it keeps a, a limit of some kind in place. Uh, but then it also allows people to come back. So uh, if you serve in the legislature in your 30s, you know, you serve your time. Uh, well, currently, uh, once you hit 16 years, you can't come back for re-election. So this would allow people to serve um, later on in life, maybe after having some more experience or uh, maybe having some, um, uh, some qualifications that voters might want them to come back. Um, that can't happen under a lifetime term limit. Uh, so that's kind of um, one of the reasons uh, that it's being advocated for. Um, also, um, in the past, there have been some other proposals, some other uh, proposed changes to term limits from the citizen initiative route, and uh, this, uh, those initiatives uh, would have um, made term limits a little bit more stricter. So this is a way for them to uh, address some of the concerns uh, that have come up from voters and uh, still have some term limits, but then have more flexibility. Opponents. Well, so opponents, uh, it, there's um, you know concern that uh, it uh, allows legislators to come back. So they, they might be opposed to the, to the ending of the lifetime term limits uh, so that they uh, come back and they're uh, not necessarily in favor of that. Or, um, you know, some people don't like term limits at all. So even though that this would be a little bit more of a, a flexible situation, some people say that their vote, uh, the election, is uh, the term limit, essentially. So they might be opposed to it for that reason. Uh, so uh, there's, there's different viewpoints. Um, some want it to be stricter, some don't want any at all. Uh, so you've got a, a variety of viewpoints there from opposition. And if approved in November, it would take effect when? It would take effect in January. So that is why people who are elected this November would fall under uh, the 16 year uh, rule, essentially. Stay with Chris Hickson for just a second and go to Amendment 3, or Issue 3. Issue 3, say. that's right. So Issue 3 is also from the legislature and this uh, affects the uh, ballot issue process itself, what we're here talking about today. Uh, it would affect uh, ballot issues from the legislature, uh, from the citizen initiative process, 
And uh, so from the legislative side, uh, what this issue would do is uh, require additional votes from senators and additional votes from the House to put a proposal on the ballot uh, from, you know, from them. So there would need to be 12 additional votes uh, combined from the House and the Senate to refer something to voters. Raise the threshold. It would raise the threshold. So now it's a, you know, a majority of the, of the House and Senate, and so now it goes from you know, that 50% to 60% 60, 60 of legislative approval to put something on the ballot for voters to decide. And so that's the legislative side. Um, it would also remove requirements to publish ballot titles in newspapers for six months ahead of an election and uh, replace that requirement with um, you know, uh, something that, you know, as required by law. So the legislature would be able to flesh out publication requirements for ballot titles. Uh, so that's the legislative side of issue three. Um, the citizen initiative side of issue three, um, you know, Arkansas is one of 15 states where voters have the ability to refer a constitutional amendment, a state law, or a, an, a referendum, along with the legislature being able to refer something. Uh, so the citizen initiative process in our state um, has been around for quite some time. Uh, this amendment would change uh, how many um, counties uh, voter signatures would have to come from. So just kind of taking a step back, the, the citizen initiative process itself is, you know, a ballot issue group wants to put something on the ballot. So they go around and they collect a certain number of signatures from across the state. And they have to collect a certain number of signatures um, from 15 counties across the state to meet their total. Uh, this proposal would increase uh, the number of counties required from 15 counties to 45 counties. So the total number of signatures required won't change, uh, just the number of where they must come from would increase. Uh, another Broadens the geographic right, to an right. extent. Right, yeah. right. Uh, so it, it would uh, be in some additional counties. Um, that too would be um, you know, a, an increase, uh, just like the legislature. And uh, what it would also do is it would move up the time, the, the deadline for when ballot issue groups have to turn in their signatures. Uh, right now, they turn in signatures in July. Uh, the, the Constitution says four months ahead of the election, so that puts us in July. This proposal would uh, say January, um, that they would have to submit it, the signatures in, in January. Uh, so another thing that the proposal would do is it would uh, eliminate a cure period uh, that ballot issue groups have to go out and collect additional signatures. So once a group uh, turns in you know, their big uh, stash or a big pile of signatures from across the state, box after their box boxes after, after box. boxes, once they turn in all those boxes, if they have a, a certain percentage of, of good or of valid signatures, um, they ha are granted what we call a, um, a cure period. They have time to go out and collect more signatures in case any of what they turned in might have some flaws. Uh, so this proposal, uh, issue three, would uh, eliminate the cure period. Um, and not just at the state level, it would eliminate the cure period at, at the county ballot issue level and at a city ballot issue level. Uh, so that's the only thing um, uh, in issue three that would affect local elections as well. Uh, and then also issue three in the citizen initiative side would um, set a deadline for when people could challenge uh, a ballot issue. So if somebody wants to sue to have the issue removed from the ballot, uh, right now there is no deadline to file a lawsuit. Uh, this would set a deadline of April 15th. So that, that, I know that's a, that's a lot in there, um, but uh, that, I think that pretty much summarizes everything that um, issue three would do. Let's try the pros and cons of it pretty quickly. Sure. <laughs> it's got its advocates. It certainly has its opponents. <clears throat> yes, it does. Yes, it does. So uh, this is a legislative proposal, um, and when they talked about... Primary some, advocate. To, uh, right, yeah. So when they talked about this issue, at the legislature last year when they proposed it and they were uh, you know, having debate about it. Uh, sponsors talked about how that they think that the Constitution should be harder to amend, uh, that, um, that there are too many uh, outside groups wanting to change the Constitution, maybe in ways that Arkansans might not be supportive of. 
so that was one reason that they gave. Um, they also talked about that by increasing the number of counties from where signatures come from, that uh, it would indicate more support for an issue to be on the ballot. So, you know, maybe, um, you know, if Arkansans aren't supportive of an issue, it shouldn't go on the ballot in the first place. Uh, so that's some of the, the supporting statements. Um, and then from the opposition, uh, there's various different groups opposing because there's various different um, changes. Um, from the opposition, uh, people have been saying that it would, it would make it harder to put something on the ballot to the point that um, it would be nearly impossible for citizen groups without a lot of funding to go out and collect signatures to uh, put a proposal on the ballot for voters to decide. Uh, so that's been the primary opposition that it, it would make it too hard for groups to do that. Um, some other opposition uh, more recently, um, you know, there's opposition to doing away with publication requirements in newspapers, uh, that they want that to, to stay in the Constitution. Uh, so, uh, th I mean, th that's, that's been a lot of it, just uh, concern about um, it being too difficult of a process. By any objective standards, issue three, if adopted, would in fact make it rather more difficult to put some, for citizen organizations to put something on the ballot. Well, we, that remains... Initiated act or constitution. Yeah, well, I mean, that remains to be seen. Um, obviously, you know, we, we don't know until it, it's in effect, but um, that's what the supporters were, were saying, what they, um, they wanted it to be harder to change the Constitution. Um, you know, our Constitution goes back to 1874, and voters in the last election approved the 100th Amendment, and um, they just think that, you know, it, it should be a little bit more difficult to, to do that, um, to put things on there, or, or to change the Constitution. Right. And I would say this in our voter guide, we do um, discuss a little bit about some of that history. So you can see, we kind of come up with a count of how many things have been mm -hmm. referred by legislators, how many by citizen petition, how many of those have passed and failed. So that, again, those voters can kind of look at that history and, and make that decision good, for themselves. Good, good, good time to put that voter guide up on the screen if we can, <laughs> and the website too. Uh, I think we've got it on tap there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll, I'll hold up our copy. Yeah, we'll get it up there. Well, well I do happen to have the website is uaex.edu backslash ballot. Mm -hmm. Did I get right. it right? Yes, you did. That's it. UAEX.edu backslash, backslash ballot. There were to have been, Dr. McCall, some other issues on the ballot, but uh, no. That is correct. So there were. And uh, the Supreme Court. <laughs> there were three other uh, issues that were originally listed, and they are actually in our guide because it went to print before they were officially declared not happening. Right. Uh, they were all three citizen initiated. Um, one of them dealt with um, uh, creating a, a commission to figure out redistricting of uh, our state legislative uh, districts as well as our federal uh, House of Representatives districts. There was another one that dealt with um, the way we vote actually. So it proposed a single primary system with a ranked choice voting in the general election to determine winners um, with an, an immediate or an instant runoff so that you wouldn't have to have runoff elections in the, in the future. And then the last one was a referendum on um, a law that was passed by the legislature that defined the practice of optometry. So all of those were petition, citizen initiated uh, issues that went through the petition process. The courts decided that there were some problems in the petition process, particularly the certification of uh, canvassers, um, and so those were ultimately thrown out by the courts. Um, issue six may still appear on people's ballots, especially if you're doing early voting. You may have already seen that, um, but your votes it, it's not it's not part of the voting this year so you can mark it if you want it won't be counted you can leave it blank and it's not going to hurt anything. And the court found objection uh, 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 the court's action was based on a reading of the statute which was it basically invalidated uh, the issue because of the way uh, because of who and the credentials I should say maybe of those who were gathering petitions. 
Yeah, well, so what it was is that um, the, the canvassers have to undergo a background check before they can collect signatures. And uh, they also, you know, uh, sign an affidavit saying that they have not been convicted of a crime that would prevent them from collecting signatures. So uh, that was done, uh, but when the uh, sponsoring groups went to turn in the paperwork to the Secretary of State's office, the language that they used uh, did not meet the, the statutory requirements that said that they had passed a background check. So they had conducted some state background checks on the canvassers, but the way, um, the phrasing that they used when they submitted it is what tripped them up. Uh, they wanted a federal okay too, as well. Uh, that, that's part of um, several of the lawsuits, but the, the main issue was the language used for right. certifying that they had passed a background check. Okay. And this is something I think that you're going to continue to read and hear about because it is still in courts. Even though these issues have been thrown out for this election, uh, they're still debating in court whether or not that language, in fact, there's, mm -hmm. there's a case right now that's basically saying this is not uh, constitutional language that's in our state law. So we're going to hear more about this mm -hmm. in the future, um, particularly as we start looking ahead to 2022. So, Both the uh, litigation and the issues. Right, exactly. right. Well, and, and, and that's a good uh, time to bring up that uh, there are still challenges to issue two and issue three that's right. taking place right now as when we're talking today and um, how that will be decided or whether it will even be decided ahead of election day. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll find out there's not that many days left. Issue one, issue two, issue three, there they are. And we thank you, Dr. Stacy McCullough and Kristen Higgins. Thank you so much for your insights. Thank you. Thank you thank again you. and to the university system for that splendid voter guide right down the middle. A lot of facts in there. We encourage you to pick one up thank or to you. go online and find it. Thanks again to our panel. See you next time. Major funding for Election 2020 Ballot Initiatives provided by AARP Arkansas.